What's up, y'all? Uh, gonna do a quick tutorial here. Uh, try to keep it quick on um, how to do scraping with an emulation station. Uh, most of it's pretty self-explanatory and easy. It's not that difficult to figure out. Um, however, you know, there's some corners you can cut by someone telling you just a little bit early uh, about some of the issues you might run into or just how to do things. Uh, so I'll show you kind of how to do kind of some of the things that I've learned. One thing before we start out is if you would like to completely start over um, with a games list uh, section, um, all you have to do is open Emulation Station up, uh, go into Games List, and you can delete any of these folders. These are the folders that are built based on when the scraper actually scrapes and scans the folders that contain your ROMs. For our example here, we're going to actually delete the Dreamcast folder completely. That's going to allow us to start over completely brand new with the Dreamcast game list. So you can do that with all of these if you want to. What will happen is that it's going to delete all of the um, information pointing to the metadata that's going to download like the um, information, the year it was produced, all that stuff, the box art. The box art still exists within Emulation Station, but it doesn't point to it anymore. So if you got the box art wrong or you're sick of it or whatever, it's something happened and it's just completely screwed up and you want to start over, that's how you do it. So we'll close that down, start up Emulation Station, and you'll see here that if we went into Atari, you see everything's there just as it should be. You go into Dreamcast and it's fresh and brand new. Um, so to scrape the files, what you do is you hit the back button, the select button. Uh, once you're, uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to back out and go to here. This is going to be able to allow you to do the f entire folder, not just individual games. You can only do individual games if you select the system and go inside of it. You can do the entire system or all your systems if you want to uh, when you're at this screen. So you hit the start button, you go to scraper. I like the games DB. I feel like it's uh, it comes up with more positive results. I keep the scraper ratings off. I don't even really know what that is, and I don't really care. Uh, scrape now, and of course you click scrape now, and it doesn't scrape now. It goes into a sub directory or sub list of what you can kind of select and do and pre designate. I'm only going to do the Dreamcast because I don't want this to take forever. And it's just a quick tutorial. If you want to do all your systems right now, that's fine. Uh, depending on how many ROMs you have, it'll take a while, you know. Uh, or it could be really quick if you don't have a lot of games. So I have one system selected. That is the Dreamcast. And I turn off the user decides on conflict. Basically what this does is if there's multiple decisions that have to be made based on a single title, say Crazy Taxi is there, but there's Crazy Taxi 1, Crazy Taxi 2 and some other game out there with the name Taxi in it, and the scraper didn't know which one it was, um, it will stop and say, which one do you want to select? If you don't have a lot of games, that's actually pretty cool to do. You can just do it on the fly. Uh, if you have a ton of games, it's usually easier to have it just pick the first one or a random one, and then you can go back and edit it later. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting here for hours, you know, trying to decide on each one. So I'm going to turn that off. And hit start, and you can see it's just going to fly through and scan all those games. There's only 13 of them, doesn't take too long. We're done. It skipped one game, saying basically I had no idea what the game was, we're skipping it. I'm going to back out of that, go into Dreamcast, and now we have our pictures and metadata. Now, if you notice, it doesn't look like it's supposed to. Um, Crazy Taxi 2 is listed twice, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is listed twice. Of course, in my folder, I don't have two of them. Uh, so what we'll need to do is we can go in and individually select one and tell it, no, this is the wrong one. This is the one I want it to be. So while you're in this uh, menu here, you can hit the back button. It's the back button on my Xbox controller. I don't know what it is on other ones. Um, go down to edit this game's metadata. And you can scroll through and change things in here if you want. But for lazy sake, we're just going to scrape it again. Uh, 
So here, this is kind of in real time and everything. Right up at the top, you'll see it says Crazy Taxi 2.cdi. This is actually the right title then. Uh, since we had two of them, we had a 50-50 shot of picking the wrong one, you know, or the right one. So we're going to back out of this one. B, B, B. We're going to go to the first one here. We're going to hit the back button. And scrape. And at the top, you see Crazy Taxi .cdi. So this is the first one. So we're going to actually arrow down. It just scraped it already. And here is the real uh, picture and metadata that we want to apply to this one. So you click A or select, uh, save, and then you can back out of this. Now, if you notice, we still have the crazy taxi selected. The name's right, but the box art is wrong. All you have to do is move the controller, you know, the cursor down one and then back up again. And it, it picks it. It goes to the right box art. So that's exactly how you do it. We'll do it again for uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, just so we can be thorough. Uh, you see at the top of this, Marvel vs. Capcom 2.cdi. We already know this is the right one. So we're going to go to this one, Marvel vs. Capcom.cdi. So this is not the second one in the series. Go down, scrape, and here is what we want. I'm going to hit A, save back out, move our thing around, and there you go. So now we have the box art correct, the metadata correct, and everything's right. Hooray! So um, just uh, to go a little bit further, say for instance that uh, we push the button here, we go in here, just as you know, uh, we hit scrape and nothing came up in here. Uh, it says nothing, and that does happen. Um, you can go down into input, and you'll notice that it's kind of cropped off at the end there. I don't know if this, the search data actually really sees what's being displayed here or if it's something else or if it shows everything, but the text field is kind of screwed up here. I didn't invent this, so, you know, whatever. Um, I can A, I can crop this down, and you're welcome to type anything you want to in here. In fact, we could type Sonic uh, like that. The Enter button our keyboard, go down to Search, and actually now we're scraping for the Sonic title. That's kind of how that works. So that way, if you felt like it was just completely wrong in some way, you can always rename it on the fly and um, get the right metadata like that. We're actually going to go back and not save any of this because that doesn't apply to us. That's really it. That's all there really is to in scraping. Unfortunately, I haven't found anything super advanced to pick titles that just no matter what you type in, no matter what you do, they just won't scrape. Uh, I've heard of... A couple of different titles, and I think I've ran into some like Pac-Man and stuff like that, where you spelt with a hyphen, you spelt without a hyphen, you spelt with quotes. No matter what you do, it just won't find it. In the event that you find yourself where it just isn't finding anything at all, um, I've found that deleting the games list completely and starting from scratch has been a really big help. Uh, I think if you scrub the games too many times the uh, metadata and what it kind of downloads and everything starts getting pretty mucky and crazy and maybe there's some corrupted files in there or whatever. So you can just go in, delete all of them, start fresh and new. Um, along with deleting those, I would also suggest deleting the download images, just if you're going to start fresh. Um, this is where all of the box art is uh, held. So when you create something in the games list, say we're in the uh, Dreamcast, that's what we're working with. You'll see, here's all that metadata. This is everything that it downloaded. You can see here the bio on the game, you know, and what it got. And it points to that downloaded images fo folder with the image. So you know that this is pointing to this folder right here. So you're more than welcome to select all this and delete the entire thing. These actually get kind of big. Um, because they are containing every single JPEG image, you know, of every single game. The bigger list you have, you know, the bigger it can be. Um, going just a step further, if you decide that you want to customize the box art itself, this is where you actually do that. Uh, say, for instance, that you wanted all the Genesis games to look exactly the same as the cover art is. You know, they did a pretty good run of, you know, making uh, images or boxes that were kind of... Uh, the same, you know, like in a series or whatever. So this uh, image doesn't want to come up for some reason. There you go. It's like it has Genesis on the side here. 
But if we go to Battletoads, it doesn't have Genesis on the side. If you're completely crazy and feel that every single one has to be exactly the same, um, all you have to do is go on the internet, find the image that you want, keep the naming convention exactly the same. Uh, so whatever it's named, this is Battletoads and Double Dragon, you know, UC, uh, exclamation point image. Uh, keep all of that the same. Drop the new image in there, or delete this one, drop the new one there, name it like this. And it will replace the image in Emulation Station. And that way you can have all of them with, like, you know, the Genesis thing on the side or, you know, whatever. Uh, something like this doesn't seem to match with the rest of them, especially Barbie Supermodel. So, uh, which is the best game in the entire world. But uh, you get the point, you know. So that way allows you just to dip in and be a little bit more customizing with things that are going on. It always is fun to have everything very uniform and uh, the same, you know, as opposed to just a hodgepodge of uh, different stuff. MAME is notorious for getting some terrible images. Uh, one may look crazy great. This is Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. We're all familiar with that image if we've ever played the game before. But then you download something like this and it's like, seriously, come on. So... You can definitely replace things like this to make it look cooler, better, uh, make it look like, you know, more professional almost, because this picture is just terrible, you know. Um, other ones aren't so bad, but you could do better. Like, the, the internet is so full of cool images and games, uh, images that you should be able to pull from that there should be no problem replacing these with ones that you like and look and uh, you think you look better. So, all right. Thanks, guys.